Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. I recently took a poll on Instagram and also on my YouTube channel for what video you guys wanted to see next and skin prep for makeup highly won by a landslide. In this video, I wanted to cover how to identify the different skin types, how to prep for them, and also different makeup application techniques and different products that you might need throughout this process. I'm gonna go over the three main skin types and that is oily skin, dry skin, and combination skin. I think that we get a little bit confused over how to identify skin types and what oily and dry skin actually means. When a client first sits down in your chair, you want to make sure to ask them what type of skin they think they have, if they're more oily, if they're more dry, or if they're a combination of them. So you do have to make sure that you listen to clients and be as receptive as possible, but please take that with a grain of salt and use your own judgment and also assess it yourself because they may not know what skin type they have. I wanted to go ahead and cover oily skin first. Now, the majority of people that tell you they have oily skin are most most likely going to have combination skin types. If somebody has truly oily skin, this does not just mean having oil in the T-zone, meaning the forehead area and then right down the center of the face. That is a combination skin type. Oily skin is literally all the way down the face, all the way across the face, on the cheeks, everything. Their scalp and their hair might be a little bit more oily. They also might have oily eyelids. That's a truly oily skin type. Oh, the other thing you might wanna watch out for on this is if they have dry patches places, and yes, this seems really weird, but yes, people with oily skin can also have dry patches because they might be on medication for acne such as Accutane or something similar, and that tends to dry out the skin. First of all, you want to remove all of the excess oils before you start putting anything on the face that is a makeup product. If you do not do this step ahead of time, your client will go oily so fast, like within 15 minutes of you putting on the makeup because all you're doing is trapping oils underneath the makeup and so they're slowly seeping out throughout the day, as gross as that sounds. And obviously the bigger the pores somebody has, the more oils can escape. So that's why you just really wanna make sure you remove all of those excess oils before you even go in with any other makeup on top of it. My favorite way of doing this is personally going in with some sort of toner. I use the Fresh Rose Deep Hydration Toner and I go in with that just to kind of remove all the excess oils and also the rose in it usually calms down any irritation inside of the skin. The other option though is to use a micellar water. That's probably the most gentle option. And I love the Bioderma Micellar Cleansing Water. I do need to get more because I haven't gotten it in my kit for a really long time now. I'm not sure why I stopped, <laughs> but I do need to go ahead and get that again because it is a very fantastic product. They also do make Bioderma Micellar Water for oily skin specifically, and they also make one for more sensitive skin. Also, I will be linking all the products that I mentioned down below. Next thing that you want to do on oily skin type, just know that less is more. Any layering of products or really heavy creams or any sort of heavy makeup is not going to sit very well on people with oily skin. With this in mind, for skin prep, you want to make sure you go in with a very lightweight moisturizer, so no heavy creams, no like really emollient sort of moisturizers, go in with something that's very light. Ember Elise actually does have a lightweight moisturizer. It's the lightweight version of their Lay Cream Concentrate, and I really like that a lot. I have used that on people before. Then Bioderma actually does make one as well, and it is for oil control, so that is my next tip for moisturizers. You can either use one that's lightweight, or you can also use one that's specifically for oil control. Third is my tip about primers, and that is, of course, going with a primer that is either a tackier base, or it is a little bit lighter on the skin. A lot of artists do make this mistake and think that silicone-based primers are the best for oily skin when it actually is not. If you go in with a very silicone based primer like the Benefit Professional or the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer, those are super slippery sort of feeling. All they're gonna do is literally make products slip and slide all over your face. And that's not what we want. We want something that has a slightly tacky base to it so it makes all of your products just adhere and stick really nicely to the face and don't slip and slide and move around as oils are kind of producing throughout the day. So please stay away from any silicone based primers like that. I know they're meant for oily skin and meant for oil control, but that's not really what we want in this case. My two favorites personally are the Benefit Matte Rescue. They do have one that's more of a gel texture. It dries down a little bit and leaves a little bit of a tackier feel. And then I also really like the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. That one is excellent. I use that all the time for oily skin. That one has probably the tackiest base of all of them and it works really, really well for oily skin. Next for foundation, if you use really heavy cream foundations, as I mentioned before, it's not going to sit well with people with oily skin. Less is more with this too. Basically 
try to avoid any foundations that actually are meant for dry skin types because the majority of the time these are a little bit heavier and they are a little bit more creamy. Some foundations also have moisturizer built into them. Try to stay away from those too because again, those are probably meant for people with more dry skin. As we all know, my personal favorite foundation for all skin types is the Face Atelier Foundation. I know that a bunch of people have had issues with this with oily skin types, but you just may not be prepping it in the right way and that's why it's not working for you. But personally, I have never had an issue with Face Atelier on any skin type, no matter if it's dry, combo, oily. I would highly recommend Face Atelier. That is a really great foundation. It's also silicone based, so it's meant to fill in fine lines and everything. And I love it for every single skin type. The fifth tip that I have for oily skin is setting, and this is with a powder or a setting spray. With powders, you can obviously go in with something that is meant to mattify the skin. Some powders are more mattifying than others. The RCMA, the no color powder, that one's really fantastic. Then also, I really love the Laura Mercier powder. That one's supposed to be a little bit more mattifying as well. I do like those two for oily skin types. I personally use the Huda Beauty powders and those work on every single skin type. But if somebody is truly oily, you do want to make sure you do have a specific oil controlling powder for that. Then as far as setting sprays, I love the Scandinavia or the Urban Decay. They're literally both the same things. I think Scandinavia technically owns Urban Decay setting sprays or makes them for them. I really like those a lot because they don't leave a very glowy finish or anything. They're a little bit more tacky, but they don't have too tacky of a finish. It's kind of hard to explain, but they basically are both really good at long lasting and setting and locking everything in so those oils do not seep out throughout the day. Then I wanted to quickly go over how to retouch makeup if you are on a film and television set or in a photo shoot where you are there touching up for the talent. With oily skin, a lot of people make the mistake of just rushing over and then just putting powder on top of the oily places. But here's the thing. If you keep putting powder on top of the oily spots, it will get very heavy and very cakey looking and that can tend to separate the makeup over time. So you have to make sure to get rid of that layer of oil first and then go in with your powder. There are two different ways to do this. So number one, you can go in with a sponge or a puff or something like that and just kind of almost use it as a blotting method. Or you can also go in with legitimate oil blotting sheets, which I love to carry around with me personally. And then you go in with your powder afterwards. So those are probably the two easiest ways. Okay, that was really long, but now we're going on to dry skin. <laughs> the thing that's really tricky with dry skin is that you don't actually know a person's dry until you physically start doing the makeup application, which is really hard to figure out sometimes. You're going in with a moisturizer and literally look at it and it doesn't even look like you did anything because all the moisturizer just absorbed into their skin. Or if you're going in with foundation and all of a sudden your foundation is just sticking to all of these dry patches on somebody's face, you definitely want to make sure you assess correctly before you even start mixing things or going in with products. I physically like to feel a person's skin after you sanitize, of course, and just kind of go and work my way all around their skin in the T-zone and on the perimeters of their face along their hairline. Now, how you can tell if somebody's dry is if you feel rough or patchy kind of textures on people's faces, either in certain areas or if it's all over the face. Sometimes you can tell this by seeing physical dry patches on people's faces. It can be like in their eyebrows or on their hairline, or it can also be in the form of eczema or psoriasis. You may see dry and irritated patches places. There may be a lot of redness going on. Usually people, if you ask them about their skin type, or they say that they have very sensitive skin or reactive to a lot of different products and they break out a lot, that could be an indicator that they have drier skin. Also keep in mind that a lot of times with drier skin, they are a lot more sensitive than oily skin. So you can't be as rough with your application. You have to be a lot more gentle. The first tip for this is that you want to make sure you go in and exfoliate all of the dryness. There's basically three different ways that I can think of off the top of my head to kind of quickly exfoliate. Number one, you can go in with some sort of exfoliating pads. This is more of a chemical exfoliator. I love the First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. They come in a little jar that will kind of gently exfoliate the face. I felt like the First Aid Beauty ones aren't super irritating. They're very sensitive skin friendly. So that's why I like using those. Second of all, you can go in with a moisturizer on a makeup remover wipe or a baby wipe or something like that and just go in and just slightly kind of exfoliate around with moisturizer. You can also use the same method with a moisturizer, but with a Q-tip. Oh, and then I guess the fourth one, if you do have time for this, you can have somebody go into a bathroom and exfoliate their face physically. But a lot of the times you probably will not have time for this. I personally just purchased the Sonia Roselli Sex Appeal Spray. If you guys haven't heard about it, it's actually a super great spray. You basically squirt about three squirts on your hand and then you can apply it on a person's face directly. And as you're rubbing your hands really gently on somebody's face, you'll see these little balls like pill up almost. And that is a combination of the product and also dead skin cells that you're getting off somebody's face. And then all you do with it is just take a micellar water or some sort of cleansing water and just remove it with cotton pads. It's a very, very gentle exfoliator though. It's kind of a physical and a chemical exfoliator hybrid. And I actually 
actually really have been loving it. Not sponsored by the way, but it would be really great if I was. I love her products. She has really unique products and she is a working makeup artist that developed the skincare line and I love every single thing because it's meant to be used with makeup. If you guys have already exfoliated or if somebody has really sensitive skin to the point where you can't exfoliate, then go on to step number two and that is moisturize. With moisturizers, you pretty much want to do the opposite of oily skin types. So you want to use a really heavy and rich moisturizer. As I said before, some people are super dry to the fact that you can apply moisturizer and it just disappears in the skin. In that case, you have two different options. So you can go in with more moisturizer, let it sit for a minute and then see if it absorbs or not. And you kind of just keep doing this until it doesn't absorb any longer. The other method you can do for this with moisturizer is go in with a moisturizer that leaves a residue behind. This is why I personally like using the Embryolisse Lay Cream Concentrate, the original version. I love using it because it does almost have a slip kind of feel to it or some sort of residue that it leaves behind afterwards. It's honestly been a miracle. That's why a ton of makeup artists use it and love it because it's such a great product to use. Then as far as foundation application goes, you want to make sure that you go in with a foundation, of course, that is meant for drier skin. So this is going to be more emollient, more hydrating. It might actually have a moisturizer built into it. I personally love using the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation, or you can also use the NARS Natural Radiant Foundation. I absolutely love using that. Keep in mind, you can also mix your rich moisturizers in with foundations. If you feel like you need extra moisturizer, it kind of turns it into more of a tinted moisturizer. If you need to color correct certain areas, say that person's really dry, red, and irritated, just go in with a slight green color corrector, mix it in with your foundation, and just lightly pat that cocktail in the areas where you need it. Don't put it all over the face, but just in that certain area that is really red. Red and green are complementary colors, so they will color correct each other and neutralize each other out. As far as actually applying the foundation, if you have some sort of thick moisturizer underneath it or some sort of moisturizer that has a residue left behind, the main thing that you want to avoid with foundation applications is not to swirl around or swipe or anything because otherwise you're just going to be moving product around and moving that moisturizer around underneath the foundation. Go in with a sponge. That's probably the best method for this. Get one damp and then go in with a sponge. Otherwise, if you like using brushes, use more buffing pressing motions as opposed to swiping. With this, you also may want to try to go in with cream products. Cream products usually give you a more healthy, dewy, glowy kind of look to your skin. So you want to go in with liquid or cream blushes, cream highlighters. You can even go with the RCMA cream foundation or other cream foundations. I really like the Makeup Forever HD cream foundations for people with drier skin. The other thing with dry skin is just keep in mind that they may also be dry on their eyelids so you might want to get some sort of eye cream that's meant to be used 360 all around the eye area or you can also make sure that your moisturizer that you're using on the face is safe for the eye area as well so moving on to powders you do not want to overly powder somebody that has dry skin because obviously it can stick to dry patches and just in general look very heavy after a while in this case you do definitely still want to powder somebody's skin but you want to make sure you go in with a really really finely milled setting powder or one that's very lightweight in texture. I personally like using the Huda Beauty powders for this reason. They go on very nice, they're very finely milled, and they always leave a very seamless finish. Literally Huda Beauty powders are the powders that I've been using in my kit for the last two years. I have not switched up powders since then. I love them. The only drawback is they have a little bit of a florally kind of scent. So if you have somebody that has a little bit more of a sensitivity, I do carry the Patrick Star One Size Beauty line, and that is a completely translucent powder. They also have one for dark skin as well. Those don't have any fragrances to them at all, and I really love those as well, but overall, Huda Beauty powders are definitely my favorites. And then of course, you wanna make sure you go in with setting sprays. Go in with MAC Fix Plus, and that is a hydrating facial spray. That can add moisture and also lock in foundation at the same time since it has a glycerin base. So you can use that for dry skin as well. But of course, Scandinavia is just an all over nice setting spray for all skin types. So would highly recommend. Oh, by the way, everything that I'm also mentioning for dry skin kind of also applies to mature skin too. Honestly, as far as combo skin, you mainly just wanna assess and see which parts of the skin are oily, which parts of the the skin are dry and just use the tips that I said for dry and combo skin. So just make sure to overall assess your client's skin really, really well. Obviously take into account their needs and what they would like to achieve. But then again, still rely on your artistry skills and on your knowledge of products and your knowledge of techniques. So anyways, that was my long winded video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy this video and you found it helpful, definitely go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up as well as also hitting that subscribe button down below. If you guys do enjoy makeup artist content, I do upload a ton of that on my channel. As always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.